Hey guys, welcome back to Selenium with Java June 2023 batch online training session 3. So from today's session onward, we will start with Java. So there will be total 4 sessions from Java. It will be basic to advanced. It will be covered in the next 4 sessions. 3, 4, 5 and 6 sessions will be purely on Java. So today I will cover from Java. What is Java all about? What are comments? What are the data type variable operator? in Java, what is object and classes, what is Java strings, what are the different kind of array in Java and then what are the different kind of loops available like for while and do while loop available in Java and how we can control the loop with the help of break and continue keyword using Java. So Java pro uh, programming language was developed primarily by the Sun Microsystems in 1995. But now, later point of time, like Oracle Corporation bought uh, Java from the Sun Microsystem and it's part of the Oracle now. So that is the reason whenever you try to install Java, you are going to the Oracle site, you already noticed, and then you can install it. I think nowadays, later, latest version available is Java uh, uh, 20. So in case you are using Selenium uh, with Java 1.8, just try to replace with 11 version onward, because September onward, Java 8 will not be supported by Selenium. Okay, September 30 is the last date till which you can use Java 1.8, but later point of time only Java 11 onward it will be supported by Selenium. So most of the important features of the Java I tried to list it below. Simple, object oriented, portable, secure, platform independent, architectural neutral, high performance, multi-threaded, robust and interpreted. So simple, Java is very easy to learn and its syntax is simple, clean and easy to understand. According to Sun Microsystem Java language is the simple programming language. So what is the advantage in case you are using Java? So in case you are comfortable in Java, right, later point of time in case you want to write move in the other programming language like C Sharp or C has Python, it will be very quick, right, it will take very minimal time to learn. So once you are confident in Java, you can learn this kind of similar language later point of time. Object oriented. <coughs> so Java is an object oriented programming language. Everything is in Java will be considered as an object. Object oriented means user can organize their software as a combination of different type of objects that incorporates both data and the behavior together. So object oriented programming structure is OPS concept in case you heard it. So object oriented programming structure is a methodology which simplifies software development and maintenance by providing some rules. So I'll uh, later point of time I'll cover what is OPS concept down the line. So object, then classes, and then inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, and enca encapsulation, these are all about the object-oriented programming structure. Java is portable because it facilitates users to carry the Java bytecode to any platform. It does not require any implementation. Suppose say today in case you are using Java in the Mac, so tomorrow same code you can port right to the Windows or Linux as well. Java is secured compared to the other programming language, right? User can easily develop virus free systems. Platform independent already mentioned, right? So Java is platform independent because it's different from other programming language like C, C++, etc., which are compiled into platform specific machines, which Java is a uh, right ones and run anywhere, anytime. Architecture and neutral. Java compiler generates an architecture neutral object file format which makes the compiled code executable on many processor with the presence of Java runtime system right, or GRE. High performance Java performance wise also comparative to other programming language is faster but I cannot say that it is really faster on all the top of the language but still right maybe other language is there right which is uh, more uh, faster than Java but still compared to the other mostly uh, like used language java is still uh, right faster multi threaded <coughs> so is multi threaded means like you are doing the work simultaneously so multiple processor will come into the pictures i'm just giving a simple example so say you are having 10 suites or 20 suites in a room and i ask that you eat all the suites maybe suites are big you can only eat five suites a day so it might take three or four days time to eat all the suites so you are the only person working. But in case, the I, uh, I asked to, uh, like 10 person to eat 20 suite, so you could see like each person can uh, like pick up one suite and then in the, as and when they are finishing, they will pick up the other suite. That is the way, right? Like it will be like 
much faster. So multiple resources will be working to complete the same task. So that is called multi-threading in Java. Robust is simply means strong. So in Java, there are some sort of advanced features there. That is the reason it makes Java as a robust. One is called garbage collection. So suppose in case you are having, uh, say I just giving you example, simple example. So uh, you are having some sort of ceremony, maybe uh, marriage ceremony or rice setting ceremony or other uh, like uh, baby shower ceremony, ceremony like. So for which like you have taken some your uh, like hotel as a rent, right, for a particular day, okay. So you have uh, you organized your event and you have left for the day. Okay, that same hotel can be used by next day for the other person, right? But whatever plate and other dustbin you have placed, right, that need to be clean. Otherwise, nobody can use it. So similar way, in case you are having working 10 uh, multiple processor, so at the end of the day, whenever they finish their work, that they, those need to be clean to free up the speed. So that is the reason Java garbage collection process is already there in build. So that in case some of the thing is not working, they already completed their work, they will be destroyed from the system so that your memory will be kind of uh, um, freed up. Apart from that, in Java, there is already exception handling features already there. This is the way, right? It makes Java more robust. Interpreted, uh, like Java bytecode is translated on the fly to native machine instruction and it's not stored anywhere. So development process is more rapid and analytical since the linking is an incremental and the lightweight process. So that is the way, right? That these are the features which makes Java more popular in the market. Like um, there are a lot of other programming languages there, but still Java is used uh, in may most of the project or most of the application. Then Java internal structure, I will discuss some sort of stuff. So JVM, GRE, uh, JRE which is Java runtime environment, JVM is nothing for Java virtual machine and then at the last it will be JDK. So you already see whenever you are installing J Java, right, you are installing JDK 1 point, right, like 11 version, 20 version, right, 1.8 like that, okay. Yeah, so JVM is Java virtual machine, it's an abstract machine. It is called virtual because it does not physically exist. In the real time you cannot, it is kind of naming convention. So it's a specification which provides a runtime environment in which Java bytecode can be executed. It can also run those programs which are written in the other language and compiled to Java bytecode. These are the thing you no need to worry but still try to cover so that you can also learn the internal st structure of the Java. That, that's all. At compile time, Java file is compiled by Java compiler, right? It does not interact with the operating system directly and convert the Java code into the bytecode. So whatever code you are rewriting, right? Just kind of SYSO, print out, all this stuff. Java will not understand. Right, so what is there? The compiler is there. So whatever code you are writing, right, in the English format, the compiler will convert it to Java byte code, so that Java programming language can understand the significance of that code. Then JRE, which is real-time existent Java runtime environment, is a set of software tools which are used for developing Java application. It is used to provide the runtime environment. It is the implementation of JVM. It physically exists. It is a combination of JVM plus set of library plus other file that is the JRE or Java runtime environment then all this together along with some sort of library and other document will consist to will I mean so it will create the JDK or Java development kit and that is the thing you are able to see also visually whenever you are installing Java so Java development kit or JDK is a software development environment which is used to develop Java application and applet. It physically exists. It will contain JRE, which is nothing but JBM plus set of library other files. Plus, there are different tools available like Java, Java, etc. This is the combination of all the combination will be con I mean, considered as JDK. So JDK cons contains a private Java virtual machine and fewer other resources such as an interpreter, loader, compiler, archiver document generator to complete the development of Java application. So that is the way it is the internal structure of the Java will work. The importance of Java in Selenium web driver. So Selenium support lot of programming language like Python, Ruby, Perl, PHP along with Java. But st still Java is having lot of advantage. So Selenium itself written in Java, hence Java is more compatible with Selenium. 
However, user can use other supported language as mentioned like Ruby, Perl, PHP, Python, CS, etc. Good support for Selenium with Java. Anyone can get more help for the documentation and the code implementation from the internet. So in case you are having any error problem, right, you can just paste it in the Google and you can find out a lot of solution, lot of video, lot of documents also available. Most of the Selenium tester are using Java only, so knowledge sharing or clarification resolution will be very fast compared to the other programming language. Java is platform independent, so user can use Java in any of the operating environment. It can be Windows, Mac or Linux. Then what are the syntax rules for Java? Okay. So Java is case sensitive, means capital word and right uppercase lowercase will not be the same here. First letter of the class name should be uppercase. Method name should always start with lowercase. Interface name will be uppercase. Package name should start with lowercase. Constant name in case you are declaring something will be uppercase. Java program file, right in case you are creating a notepad should exactly match with the class name. Java program execution will start from the main method. In case you are creating a Java class without main method it will not work. Every statement should end with semicolon and like the code primarily block will be enclosed with the double bracket, right? So let's create a uh, new class here. So this is the project created, this is the package created. So in case you simply want to practice Java, you just simply can create a Java project and then uh, Java class, you no need to associate Selenium jar file because these are all Java. Yeah, in case you want to practice the Selenium, definitely Selenium jar file should be integrated, right, added. Session 3 I am creating. So this is the public static void main. So you could already see here, right, all your block is ending, right, with that code. Your execution will start from the main method. And in case you want to type something, suppose SO, SO, right, uh, Java, welcome to Java world, right? So you could see this is ending with semicolon. So now if you run it, you could able to see that will be printed in the console, output will be printed in the console. So that are the different kind of stuff you need to understand or remember your class name is starting with uppercase, your package name lowercase, all this stuff. These are the syntax you generally need to use, right, for the better, but so that anyone can understand also. So you need to understand, right, so that in case you'll be working on the real-time project, it is not only you. Sometimes you can have bigger team, right, maybe 5, 10 person will be working. So in case you are not, right, uh, kind of utilizing your uh, all the syntax rule or your uh, like project specific, organization specific, like uh, coding standard, it will be very tough for the other person to uh, go through your code, inspect your code, right, to give you more feedback. Or maybe later point of time, right, suppose you have gone for a break, and after that you have returned right three to six months time even you also not able to understand the all the stuff that is the reason right better to use the all the syntax rule whenever you are working for java any programming language or any other framework as well so how uh, you create the pro project you need to create a pro uh, kind of first launch eclipse create a java project package then the class and you already see right uh, the main method you already selected and we have tried to print out something so what is public in the main method? So this is called access modifier. So in Java there are a couple of access modifier available like public, private, uh, default and protected. Static is the non-access modifier. Okay, static, then final, these are the called non-access modifier in Java. Void is nothing but the return type. Okay, I already mentioned here. Void is return type, means it will not return anything. And this is the method name. Okay, this is the complete method name for the main method. And then system is the predefined class in Java. Out, it is nothing but an instance of the print stream stream, which is public and static member field of the system class. And print is the method name. And this is the message we want to print out in the console. So that is the importance of these two, right? Main method and SOISO method. Sometimes it's called SOISO method, but you no need to worry. SOIS stand for system.out.println and then the message, okay? So that is the significance of these two important methods. Sometime interviewer might ask question. So please remember these uh, slides. <coughs> then what is Java comments and why it is required? So already you've seen, right? So whenever you want to uh, comment something, right? Generally we used to select the code and then go to the source 
and write add block comment right similarly if you want to remove the comment what you can do you can go to the source you can click remove block comment but that is not the all the way because it is coming from the eclipse feature only but what you can do using java and why comment is required so sometime you having like 1000 2000 3000 line of code but you need to mention something right suppose you are creating a method which will be having some significant and you need one want to let uh, the other user know that this is the method and this is all about the method right all the information so you can comment out something right so this is like some the some way i want to comment out right uh, the importance of soiso method i want to give some line so that other person can get to know but in case i am not giving right double code so it will be considered as a line and it will throw the error because that is not having any other java cannot understand right so that is the reason i need to comment out so that that particular line will be present in your code but that will not having an impact so that is the reason comment will be used so there is a way like to use single line comment and multiple line comment so single line you need to use double slash and in case you need to use multiple line comment so in the eclipse the feature is available right uh, that is the way but apart from that in case you want to comment multiple line so you need to start with slash star and at the end line you need to give star and slash okay sorry so that is the way the multiple line will be commented out you could see there is no error so these are the line present here but this is commented out so this will not be executed only that particular line will be executed you can change it to java world 1 also like that so that only line will be having the impact here other line will be present but that will not be having any impact okay you could see the welcome to java world this is the line present but those are line i have commented out so it is not like playing any role just this is present but in the ideal mode right or disable mode so that is the way right you can use the java comment so comment can be used to explain code java code and make it more readable comment are english words used for code documentation java supports single line and multiple line comment so i have given the example so comments in java make the code more readable it also make the code disable from the execution then what are data type in java so what is data type first you need to understand so data type is the classification of the type of data that a variable or object can hold in the computer you already seen right whenever the last two session right whenever we are creating something say right uh, we already see like we are storing in some sort of string or web element other stuff right but web element is coming from uh, selenium web driver this is the type right this is data type also okay so that you are storing that variable and this is the type of the variable but you one case already see with string and other stuff right so this are the coming from java okay so in java support primary two category of data type one is primitive data type and one is non primitive data type so primitive will be having four different category integer relational character and conditional and integer also there will be a four different type byte short integer long relational there will be two float and double so it will be decimal format and integer means there will be no decimal only number it can have negative to positive value and character will be only having one character a to z with the upper case and the lower case and boolean will be having only two type it will be true or false and non primitive or reference data type it can be object class string array interface etc all the stuff will be covered in the upcoming session no need to worry so byte you could see this is the this is the size of the byte 8 bits right okay so what does it mean by 8 bits it will be 2 to the power 8 okay so 2 to the power 8 means uh, i think 256 character right so size of the byte will be starting from minus 28 minus 128 then 0 to plus 127 that is the way size will be varying okay so first you can divide that one and negative it will start and zero it is considering one digit and still it will go to that half minus 1 positive part so that is the way. similarly short 16 bit means 2 to the power 3 16 integer 32 bit means 2 to 2 to the power 32 long 2 to the power 64 float 2 to the power 32 double 2 to the power 64 so negative also can be your byte or the relational type character will only hold a to z with lower case upper case boolean will only hold right true or false so let's see define something here 
say I want to define something called byte and variable that is the data type you could see this coming from the Java that is the reason color is getting changed right here and you can give a variable name called B equal to you can define something called say 34 okay and now you can print it out so you could see here some sort of right warning message yellow color so what does it mean whatever variable you have defined you have defined and your there is no code right error in the code but you are not using that variable anywhere that is the reason it is giving you some sort of warning right the value of the local variable is not used anywhere but in case as and when you will be using right b so you could see that warning message will be removed from the system now you can just run it so 34 is printing so what is the size of the byte it is 2 to the power 8 means uh, like minus uh, sorry 256 character right size so minus 1 to 20, 128 to plus 127 it go but in case you are giving 134 right so which is beyond that one limit you could see immediately error message is coming why error message is coming you could see right you need to convert to integer because that byte cannot hold that data it can hold up to 127 so that is the reason it is having the problem okay so let's now define something called integer as 134 int i this data type integer i equal to 134 and now you could see error message is near no error message now you can print it out i so that is the way in case you are having more digit you can use double sorry you can you can use uh, uh, right long also that is integer now in case you are using double something right which can have uh, sorry uh, decimal value but in case in integer you want to give something decimal value it will throw you the error you could see immediately throwing the error it cannot have content decimal value you need to convert it to double okay or, or also in case you are giving want to give something character it will also not take because integer all the integer data type only contain the integer value negative to positive right that is the way including zero okay similar way in case i want to create something called double say d variable equal to 300 like something like that and i can use decimal value it will not throw any error so that is the way i can use double I can print out the double in case I want to consider with the uh, uh, like uh, other type boolean say boolean bool that is the variable name I can give equal to it will consider only true or false no other value similarly other one is character I can use char say c and you need to give with the single code say I can give anything called S that is the character value within single code so that is the way you can define the variable and based on the variable you can create a variable sorry based on the data type you can create a variable and you can assign the value as well so as and when you are calling the variable you no need to give any doubt because you are directly calling the variable here okay now let's try to run the code and let's see the output okay you could see here 34 then 134 then the double value then the true or false it's like that value in case you are giving something called true one it will not work because boolean will only take true or false similarly character will only take one digit but in case you are giving two digit it will not work it will throw the error okay now in case you want to define some variable the same data type right integer say i1 at the same time and i2 like that in the same line you can define and then you can define the value right i1 equal to say 100 like i2 equal to 200 so that is the way also sometime possible so you can define the variable first and then later point of time you can just uh, use the value and now you can print it out right i1 and i2 i will also show you what are the different operation we can do primarily that not be a problem i1 and i2 now if you run your code it will work so that is the way in case you want to define similar variable multiple variable you can define them and at a point of time you can add the value also you could see it's coming so that is the way you can deal with the data type yeah i will cover one more uh, two topics then i will take a pause for uh, taking the questions so what is variable 
So as of now you already seen, right? Variable is associated to the data type. So you cannot create any variable without assigning any data type. And data type also not work without any variable. So these are the kind of link available with the variable and the data type in Java. So variable is a container which holds the value while Java program is executed. A variable is assigned with the data type. Variable is a name of the memory location. Java variable are case sensitive. So say I am defining here called capital I1. You could see error message is coming. So capital I1 and smaller I1, lower case I1 you will not understand. Right? So I need to change it exactly everywhere. So it will be case sensitive. And then variable names should not match with the Java keyword or reserve word. So these are the reserve word like integer, byte, public, static, void, try, catch, for, while, do while. So it just is the reserve word. You cannot use them. So say I want to define some variable say integer for. You could see immediately error message is coming. Because I cannot use declare some variable which is the reserve word. But in case I am using for one, then it will be not be a problem. Because for is the reserve, but for one is not reserved. So I can use that is the way. Okay. So reserve word I what I cannot use. Must be unique in the scope of declaration. Right? Whatever variable you are declaring, that should be unique in your code. So in case you are declaring duplicate variable, it will throw in the error. Because that is already declared, you cannot create duplicate variable. So it should be like I1, one, one, one will be fine, but not I1 exactly, because already declared. So your variable should be always unique in the code. And variable name should not exist like that 250 character. It can have only alpha numeric and the underscore value. Right? Alpha numeric also I can give something like that, underscore. That will also work. Okay, other character might not work. In case you are giving ampersand one, it might be problem, right? It will only take hyphen, underscore, and alpha numeric. But underscore also might take hyphen, it will not take. Only underscore will take. Okay, and underscore and a to z and any numeric value it will take. <coughs> the value stored in the variable can be changed during program execution. Okay, so say I have already define the variable value i1 equal to 100. Now I can change the value like any number of times say 200 and then 300. Okay, that is the way I can change the variable value as and when required. So in case you are using before that variable what was the latest value that value it will take. So here in case you are using so it will take the latest value before that variable using. You could see it will take 300 latest value you could see it is coming at 300 so variable in case you want to use some variable that should be used before that right in case you are using after that will not work suppose say i want to right let's i already want to use i2 okay but i2 variable i have declared and later point of time i want to just uh, change the value here sorry not before that before the code will it work it will not work because after using you cannot use it so wh whenever you need to define the variable value you need to use before that declaration and the assignment also then it will work so this is called declaration this is called assignment and this is called declaration and assignment at the same time okay so that is the way right you need to deal with the variables so this is the generic right uh, thing you need to remember whenever you are dealing with the variable <coughs> i will cover one more topics then i will take a pause guys so there are three type of variables available in java so what are those local variable then uh, instance variable and the class or static variable so local variable means it only accessible locally within that method only you cannot use it outside that method so that is called local variable and the instance variable means as and when you are defining some variable as a uh, I am mean creating a variable normally so in case you want to use them you need to create a object or instance first after that you can use it right then only you can use it and then static variable Okay, a variable that is declared as static, it will be static variable. As and when you are declaring something as static, 
automatically your memory allocation will be done and a single copy of static variable will be shared across all the instances of the class that is the reason right in case you are using something a static variable you no need to create any object or instance you just directly access them in the main method now let's try to implement this three thing so this is the class level i can declare some variable say integer a i can comment out this part for now integer a equal to say 20 so this is called your instance variable variable then i am defining something called in static int static int b equal to say 50 this is called static variable and local variable how can i use it so i need to create a method here public void say and i need to give any public stat no need to worry about the method i'll be covering in the upcoming session no worry so i can create something called integer c equal to say 100 okay then i can use it so i so okay so public void okay so this is called local variable next next let now let's see okay so now you just want to access them okay this variable one by one let's see what the problem is coming so i want to access a i want to access b and c all the variable i want to access in the main method and let's see what the problem is coming okay you could see for b there will be no error right at the line of code 11 uh, 18 line number there will be no error why because it is defined as static i already mentioned in as and when you are defining something as static so a copy of the static variable right it will be shared across all the object or instance of the main method or the class so that is the way right you can access in the main method anytime without creating an object or instance so it is fine and then instance variable you cannot use directly it will throw the error you could see here the error message is coming cannot make a static reference to the non-static field and local variable right it c cannot be resolved to a variable local variable you cannot access outside your local method right outside your method so you cannot use it here you cannot use it here okay and i will let you know how what are the way you can use it now static one you can use it without anything normal way and 50 is coming but in case you are you want to use as a non-static or instance variable you need to what you need to do you need to create an object or instance of the class you need to create a object or instance of the class you already see what is the way you used to do web driver driver equal to new com driver wherever web driver was interface and the com driver was class but here ever we are already having the class name which is called session 3 so i will be using that class name and then i am creating the variable object equal to new class name so that is the syntax i can create a object now i can call that co code here but i cannot still use it so i need to use that object reference then dot a so that is the way i can use that a variable which is the instant variable so first i need to create an object or instance of the class then with the help of that object or instance i can use the normal instance variable so that is the way i can do it now it will work you could see 20 is coming but local variable you cannot access in the main method what is the way you can use you need to call that method so that automatically based on the method objective it will be called only so what you can do right you need to call the method name then only with the help of the method and definitely it will be object into be created so now if you just press object and press dot the method will be you can call it test method right whatever test method we have created test you could see that method we are calling but we cannot call the variable local variable anywhere in the main method now it will be work 
so I don't think that we need to use that uh, part because it is a method so I can directly call it with the help of that object yeah because here it's already printed out method is called that is the reason in case returning then I need to use again SYSU method the there are the stuff all you will be learning in the down the line so you could see that is the three way I can access those variables but local variable you cannot access directly in the main method you can use it through the only the method name but instance variable in you need to first create an object or instance of the class then with the help of the object reference you can use the instance variable but static variable you can directly use or with the help of the object or instance as well you can use it so that are the different kind of variable available in java like public sorry local instance and the class or static variable i will take a pause guys so any questions from the uh, topics whatever covered so far Mm -hmm. Yes, we can declare more than one variable based on the question, right? We already declared it, right? Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, under the public void test, I can declare more variable, local variable also. That not be a problem. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. So that is the way I can do it. <laughs> access modifier public is the access modifier uh, static is the non access modifier and void is the return type and mean there's the method name right 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 main is the method name yeah it will be publicly accessible or privately accessible later point up to you can slow and you can learn or maybe the uh, protected one so that it cannot be accessed anywhere right so that is the public means it will be accessible everywhere anyone can use it public no no that you cannot change that is the java main method syntax okay yeah that you cannot do it and in case you are yeah private sometime right suppose say in case you are having a variable and you don't want to access by the main method or the other class so you can make it private so only your right your particular class can, can only access okay because sometime right later point of time will be down the line you will be learning right you will be doing the like ops concept for inheritance right so suppose say just i'm giving you example so uh, in the java suppose say there is a relationship called parent and child right in case you're having basic knowledge parent to child so whatever uh, like in case the parent and child relationship be already established right between the uh, two classes so whatever uh, parent class properties child class can access it but still i don't want to access the parent class view of the thing right so i can make them private or protected so that is the way i can just uh, I, I mean uh, make some of the thing as confidential but public means everything can be accessible that is the way i can just make differentiation with the help of the access modifier yeah for it will act it will be applicable for access modifier will be applicable for variable level as well as the class level sorry class level as well as at the method level or the block level so class level also right you could see method level also you could see and the variable level also it can be there you can make something called public okay it will not be having an impactance means without means a public also but in case you are making it private right so sometime for that class might not having problem but sometime for the other class it might having some problem based on the access hierarchy because, because same class we are accessing that is the reason but in case i want to access in the other class it will be having some problem later point of time i will slow you let you know okay i will cover it yeah <coughs> any other questions guys So once your Java is covered, then you can mo uh, mo I mean correlate more on the Selenium with Java. So I told right whenever few of the Selenium is covered, right? Maybe you are having some hard time to understand <laughs> because right in case I was covering Java fast, but still want to cover basic two sessions so that you can have some time to practice because Java is only without opening any page, right? You can do it at the code level, but yeah. So Selenium with Java. So whenever you'll be covering seven session. 
right? Three Selenium and four Java. Then you can code it more and more, and you will be giving getting more interest. Okay. Then the Java operator. So operator is nothing but like we are want to perform different operation with the help of the operator. There are primary f uh, four types of operator. Primary, but there are a few more uh, these there. Arithmetic, relational, assignment, and logical. Arithmetic is addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, increment, decrement. Relational, like equal to, not equal to, greater, less, all this stuff. Assignment means like plus equal to, minus equal to, or equal to, like that. And logical means like kind of logical, right? Like not, or logical and, or logical, or like that. So I will just cover something here. What are the different operators you can use in Java as well? Let's give some, create some variables, say integer p, integer q, integer, sorry, I don't need to give anything, p, q, r. Okay, and I can give something called p equal 20 or maybe 200. Okay, yes, Sonali. No, 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 no. We'll be using local variable only within the method, right? Here. Okay, but class level, we can uh, basically we can use something called instance or static so static means you no need to create an object for instance in the real time framework primarily method or variable will be defining a static so that you no need to create an object for instance right so uh, your question was like to you can we use the uh, class uh, no, other variable or maybe the local variable yeah so your uh, answer will be in the real time framework mostly will be defining method variable of the block as static so that automatically i can use them in any of the main method or others way okay so that is the that is the reason. Okay, so this is the three variable I have declared. Now, if I want to perform some operation, say p plus q, right? Similar way I can do it. This is called multiplication, this is called division, right? And then I can use another thing called uh, to getting the remainder part, which is modulus only remainder it will be doing and whenever you are dividing something it will only give you that right uh, only give you <coughs> the numeric part right no decimal value now let's try to see what the thing is giving okay you could see p plus q 250 p minus q 150 p star q multiplied 200 multiplied by 50 equal to 10,000 p divided by q equal to 4 and remainder is 0 because 4 multiplied by 50 equal to 0. In case you are changing it to say 30, right? Then your remainder will be coming as 20 and division will be coming as 6. <coughs> so that is the way it will work, right? You could see division 6, uh, uh, sorry, 30 divided by 200 equal to 186, so and remainder will be 20. So that is the way remainder will be coming. And division only it will be giving you the numeric part, not decimal part. Then relational operator, right? So so equal to equal to not equal to sign, right? Getter less getter equal to, right? Or maybe getter you can check or less like that, right? That is the way you can check. Okay, so it will give you either true or false so not equal to okay it will give you only true or false value okay so p equal to equal to false no 
P not equal to, it definitely is not equal to. P greater than yes, greater than less, no, false. That is the reason. So that is the way you can use that relational operator. So I forgot to complete the increment and decrement. I will cover it up. So I have defined something called PQR. Okay. I want to use P. Then next time I want to use P plus plus. Then I want to again print. So can anyone tell me what will be the value here? What will be the output for this three line? So P value is 200. So what will be the output for this three line? Yeah, tell me. Give it a try. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, not correct. No, 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 not correct. 200 only. Here it will be 201. So difference here, it will be anyway 200. So here post increment means it will be displayed by the display the value first. Then it will be incremented. So it is displaying 200 and then it is incremented by 1. So next time 201 will be stored and that is the reason here, here it will be printed 201. Yeah, right. You could see that is the output. <coughs> hmm. That is called post increment. Okay. Yeah, I'll be letting you know. Yeah. Then there will be another called pre increment. So it will be plus plus P. Then what is the value here? Yeah, exactly. Because it will be incremented first and then the value will be printed out. Okay. So that is the difference between this one two. Now, no, I want only <laughs> pre or post. <laughs> okay, you could see. So pre means it will fast in value will be impl impl implication. You will be done fast, then it will be printed out. But post means your value will be printed out. Then your like in that increase or decrease value will be stored here, and you can also use minus minus similar. It will be decreased only, like pre decrement or post decrement you can call it so in case you are using like minus minus so it will be pro pre decrement it will be minus minus means it will be 199 and next time also it will be 199 it is called pre decrement or post decrement okay so that is the way you can use this increment or decrement operator <coughs> then assignment operator so in case you are using plus plus it will be increment by one but in case i want to increase by maybe 10 time at a single time every iteration 10 times so what can i do so p plus equal to say 20 okay now if you want to print the value of p so what value will be there It will be printed. Can anyone? 220. Yeah. Similar way, if you want to decrease by minus sign, you can give by asterisk. So it will be multiplied by 20 times. Right? So it will be 40,000. Similar division means that is the symbol you can use. So it will be 10. So that is the way in case you want to jump for long run. Right? okay so you can use that this kind of operator okay assignment operator okay plus minus multiple subtraction like that and you can use logical operator so in case primarily you are having some sort of variable called boolean variable right you can check uh, that logically they are like or and all this stuff okay so let's uh, define something called um,
then what I can do here mm, I can check whether those are correct or not not equal to say b1 so it will give you the uh, sign right and then I can check uh, so in case I want to give that ampersand operation mean and and mean in case both are only true it will give you true or means in case anyone is true it will give you true so that is the kind of lo logical gate kind of stuff right so that is for or or uh, that pipe symbol One second. So it will give you true and false, right? So B1 equal to equal to B1 means true, it will be giving opposite means false. Here B1 and B2, 1 is to 1 and false, so true and false multiplied by false only, right? Here anyone is true, that is the reason giving you true. So that is the way, these are the three kind of um, Java operator you can also use. So like just kind of normal arithmetic and other stuff you can use this part arithmetic relational assignment and the logical operator in Java then object and classes you already seen right what is object and classes so as and when you are having some sort of class you can create an object with the help of the class name then the object name and then again new class name that is the syntax you need to use right that is the way you can use it okay so what is object and what is class so object is a blueprint of the class right and one class have n number of object so class is similar kind of object combination so an object in java is a physical as well as logical entity whereas the class in java is a logical entity only so class does not have real time implementation so suppose in case i am giving something called animal which is a class but can you understand with the help of any animal any anything no but I am in case I am say tiger lion cat rat right dog eh, anything you can understand as an animal right in case I am saying suppose employee are you able to recognize anyone so in your complaint in can be 10,000 employee but in case I am saying your name surname right all this stuff then you can understand that you are in you are that in employee of the organization and this your name so that is the way that class is the logical entity right whereas it is a physical entity object a class is a group of object which have common properties it is a template or blueprint from which object are created an object is an element of the application representing an instance of a class an entity that has a state behavior is known as an object like example chair table ball cycle bike car everything okay and then example like animal object all this stuff suppose in case I'm going to give another example of the class right the fruit is the class and then mango banana guava all this stuff grapes will be your object okay now let's try to create a class in that new entity is the like uh, kind of any class will be having some attribute right these are called entity so you are a uh, your name right you will be having some sort of height length weight right all this your entity okay that is the way you can segregate it by the other other right other person just like that HTML property of the object right these are the entity or the properties you already seen right whenever you are retrieving any element right the type then your class name ID name all this stuff okay so how can you define a class class then the class name within the double code you can define the entity or entity means the attribute here let's try to define something here so after the package name I can create a old class so class So I am just creating a student class. So that is the way I can create a class. Okay, class. In case you are not defining, it will be public always. And this is a class name. And here I can define something called say uh, 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 integer. Student will be having the roll number. 
this is the variable role right student can have name so it will be string only data type string name right so that is the way I can create two variable okay okay and uh, maybe um, double say student weight okay every student will be having some weight or height also but maybe that is the way you can having n number of entity okay and school name also right say I will later point up and give you so now how can I create an object for instance so let's comment out all this part here no that's not required comment out this part so you need to go to the main uh, method always and I can create an object here say s1 equal to new student now I can access those variable right with the help of that object created s1 dot if you press dot you could see roll number is coming then other variable also you can call it name wait okay it is double you could see coming from student class return time is double now if I run my code what will be the output can anyone tell me in case you are having basic ex I mean idea Mm -hmm. yes so what will be the value printed here or any error anyone give a try so let's run then I will let you know ok so you could see that the thing is coming so this is called default value of the data type so for integer white right short all this will be zero for string default variable value will be null for double float default value will be 0, 0.0 this is the default value of the variable yeah because we have defined the variable but not value any right so this is the variable but I did not define any value so that is the reason it will not be any error but it will be printing the default value of the variable so default value for the data type here already mentioned right for integer type it will be 0 ok for relational type it will be 0, 0.0 for character it will be uh, say uh, null sorry not character it will be for the string it will be null so this is the primary thing we will be using only ok so this is the default value of the data type now let us say define some value and let us see so how can I define some value here so I already created the object so s1 dot roll because it is integer so I can define something called integer then s1 dot name equal to say within the double quote it is string say Ramesh s1 dot weight say you are defining kg maybe so maybe so 30.23 kg that is the reason I have given double I can use decimal also now if you print it out so it will take that value ok now what is the importance of the object you can have n number of object created because your student right in section there can be have multiple students so you can create a new object but your object would be unique always so I can create a new object called s2 right similar way I can define right uh, say 23 name is Rahul right weight is maybe 35 right now I can also print it out ok you could see that is the way it is coming the next question will come that generally you should not define any value 
whenever you are defining the variable at the class level for those variable for which like value value will be un not unique or it will be changed across your object to object but in case some of the object right some of the uh, maybe entity your value will be constant always right so you can define and you can assign the value as well so say school because for that particular student right they are belonging to same school maybe so i can define a variable i can add some variable say uh, district government school okay so that is the way you can define so that as and when you are using right you no need to define again and again because that is common for all the student under the same school so these are the variable you can define and you can give value at the class level itself okay so automatically in case you want to access them n number of time you need to no need to give the value here so automatically it will take the default value so that is the reason for the global variable whatever will be common right you can just define the value there so that it will be also printed out okay so that is the way there is a relationship between the class and object okay i will take a pause guys as of now yeah yeah anything yeah that part you can concatenate okay that you can concatenate later point of time i'll say show you how to concatenate for the string okay that is a option called yeah yeah i can give it yeah yeah string will be your anything alpha numeric character value it can contain anything no worry string will be your alpha numeric character value in case suppose say you are defining string you can only give numeric value as well because that is string string can hold any number of thing alpha numeric character value string okay suppose say string here you have given name but suppose say sometime name in case you are giving only 1 2 3 4 5 say so rahul one it will not be having any problem because string will contain your alpha numeric and character value or you can give something rahul one and ampersand it will still hold good still yeah string will be your alpha numeric character value you could see this coming yeah tell me yeah new is the keyword right as per your question new is the keyword through which you can create a object or instance of the class so this is the class name and this is the object name whatever you are giving and through with, with the new keyword only you can create the object or instance that is the new keyword always you need to use in the last session also you already seen right that is the new keyword always you this is the format right here yeah, for creating the object or instance yeah this is the concept from the java through the new keyword only you can create the object or instance yeah yeah as and when you are want to create a object or instance maybe for the interfaces or the classes right you need to always use the same syntax right the class name and then the object name and then the new keyword and the class name and then that bracket and end with colon that is the syntax you need to use and in for the same class you can have n number of object created so that is the combination between the that is the link between the class and object so class will be unique always but your object you can create n number of object but different object will be also unique but you can create n number of object from the same class yeah that part i will i will cover later point of time then only you can enter, yeah interface right you cannot create a object so you have to take the help from the class otherwise there are a lot of option like type casting and other stuff so interface is a not a class so interface uh, for interface you cannot create a object means interface cannot be instantiated means that is the reason you cannot create a object in for the interface directly so you have to take the help from the class only otherwise other ob relevant object from the class whatever created so in the last two session you already seen right sometime in case we are type casting driver also right this is the way we have created the 
for the session to have we have created the object for instance for the javascript executor right you could see here we have typecaster driver which is the object for instance for the chrome driver so there will be a lot of concept from that part but java interface will be little different i will be covering it okay in the upcoming uh, session from the java <coughs> as part of the ops concept okay then the string right you are talking about that one string so java uh, string is a sequence of character written in double quote string may have alphabet number and special character the java dot lang string class provides many useful method to perform operation on sequence of character value an array of character works as same as string right string can be created using new keyword as well so that is the way you can define string and you can use them and you can use the new keyword you can convert a character to string as well that is the way three thing you have given you can try that one let's tr let's define some string okay that is the way i can define multiple of string <coughs> so what we can do we can concatenate string right with the help of the plus sign so in case right you want to just add two string you can use plus sign s1 plus s2 or you can add right suppose say add 100 as well later point of time so that is the way you can concatenate so what will happen hello java world then selenium java and then 100 will be concatenated if you want to give some space again plus sign and you can give some space that is the way you can give some space okay that is considered as a space okay now you could see after selenium java there will be space and then 100 will be added so that is the way you can concatenate multiple string okay you could see the space added here Okay, that is called string concatenation. <coughs> then care at, right? If you want to see right uh, a particular character at some places, right? You can use care at. So in Java, everything will start with zero, zero to n minus one, right? So suppose say I want to get something on fifth position, so I can use S O S O, then string uh, variable name dot care at. That is the method you could see. It will give you the right care at whatever indexing you want to give it will return you character data type returning characters it is coming from the string class so say i want to get third index so this is the zeroth index e equal to first index that is second index and n equal to third index maybe give fourth so it will be printing you o right so let's see how it is printing it. so that is the way i in case i for a particular string i want to get something at character location i can use caret then i can use compare to to check whether those two string are equal or not right in case it's equal it will be giving you uh, zero otherwise it will be giving you like positive or negative sign okay let's uh, use s o s o s1 dot what is the method name compare to dot compare to compared to you can give the other string let's create one more string called s3 in case it's equal it will be giving you uh, that one zero right so you can change compared to say s1 and s3 so you could see it is giving zero and here it is difference is 21 so here it is starting with h smaller h and it is capital s so that is the way it is giving, giving you 21 difference but you, you no need to worry the differences will be based on the java ascii character so in case you want to get to know you can stripe right java 
A S C double I as key table, and based on the table, it will give you the difference. Okay, so that is the way. So where? Uh, so one second. Uh, you can see us for every character, starting character only, it will have some ASCII value, right? So what is the starting character here? H is the smaller word. So for the ASCII value, for the smaller H will be your you could see molar age 104 right for ASCII value this is from ASCII table java point ok so 104 then what is the starting character of the S selenium S capital S so 104 and capital S what is the value capital S value equal to your 83 so what is the difference 104 minus 83 equal to 21 that is the reason it is coming as 21 with positive sign but in case you are changing it to S2 first and then S1 last, so it will be minus something like that, minus 21. Because it is 83 minus 104. You could see that is the minus sign. So that is the way it will be giving you compared to. Then the length. In case you want to get to know how many. Yeah, equal means it will 0. Yeah, exactly same means equal 0. You could see that is the reason it is giving 0, right? S1 and S3 compare 0. Otherwise, that based on the ASCII table, it will give you the value. Yeah. So, it will compare to a uh, string. In case it is a uh, S1 dot S2 compare 3 and a string, in case both the string are equal, it will give you 0 value. In case it is not equal, it will first take the first character. And what is the difference between two characters? So you cannot determine here. You need to go to the job ask, ASCII table. And for an each and every character, there is an ASCII value associated. So that is the difference. It will be like that. Okay. Yeah. So capital H and molar H is having the more different ASCII value, right? So it is H is value equal to, you could say, 104. And capital H value is 83. That is the difference is 21. So that is the result is coming. 21. Yeah, carrier means which character is available at the fourth index. Okay, for the S1 string. So this is zeroth index H. Then E is the first index. Again, uh, L is second index. This L is third index, and O is fourth index. So fourth index L is available. O is available, right? So that is the reason is giving you the value as O. Yeah, it will. No, no, it will start with zeroth index. Indexing, it will start with 0th index. In Java, in case size is your n, it will be 0 to n minus n. Then the, you can get the length of total, how many length is available, suppose say, in case I want to print out something, right? That return type is integer. You could see that is the way you can easily understand, right? From coming from the string class, return type is integer. So, what is the value it will give you based on the even space will also consider as a length. You could see 21 character. So, you could see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Total length is 21. So, 0 to 20. That is the way you can get it. Length. Replace in case you want to replace something, right? A single word you can do is so. What I will do in case I want to replace so S1 dot replace. So, in case you want to uh, go with single character, you need to give within the double code. So, say A part, I want to uh, maybe L part, right whatever L is there, that part I want to replace with maybe Z. Okay, so you could see whenever it is replacing, everything will be changed to Z. You could see here, all L replaced to Z. Right? In case you want to replace a sentence, suppose there is a book, right? Big book. 
you can also replace it so what you need to do say uh, wall part I want to replace so you need to give the double code because that particular thing I am replacing right maybe instead of wall right maybe uh, hello C I can replace it so that wall part will be replaced with C in case multiple word wall particular character is there everything will be replaced by C so that is the way character or maybe phrase I can replace replace then I can convert to something called uppercase lowercase right lowercase mean everything will be considered as a lowercase uppercase mean I can convert everything to uppercase so say uh, s2 is the string right where mix, mixed of uppercase lowercase is there so s2 dot I am just I will take the question oh, hold on dot two upper you could see two upper two lower like that right two lowercase similar way I can change it to uppercase uppercase it will be giving you string result and coming from the string class now lower means everything will be lower and everything will be upper yeah question please all L all L with Z right to Z yeah no not one L it is L yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it is L right smaller uh, lower case L yeah and in case you want to phrase so you need to keep it in the double code because string yeah yeah other question please go ahead yeah please go ahead mm -hmm. okay yeah so upper case lower case you already got it right we can convert anything okay then you can trim okay trim means suppose say uh, there are uh, uh, so many spaces available right suppose say there are so many spaces this is called leading presses and this is called training presses but I don't want to write print uh, the presses so I want to trim the right uh, spaces here spaces only spaces right this white spaces so I can trim it out now let's try to print her simply s1 so it will be also having your all the white spaces but in case you want to trim right left trim dot trim okay you could see here also option something maybe they are left trim right trim as well okay Okay, you could see stream uh, leading, uh, but better to use stream so that it will be trimming all the part. Right, white leading places and the trailing places, both the stream it will be both the white spaces. You could see here, here it is that spaces is there, right, normal part. Okay, but in that uh, as and when you are using trim, so re leading places also removed and also ending places of the trailing places also removed. That is the way you can use trim, trim method available in the spring class then the contents suppose say in case you are having a book right or maybe page you want to search something whether that particular was is present or not through automation how can you do it so suppose say here I want to search something that whether it having Java world or Java word is there or not so I can simply use contents you can use start with also end with also right the starting path is matching with that one it will giving you the boolean value or contents right so that is the way you can validate that your particular string or particular thing is already having that value or not contents say java right so you can easily understand it is giving you true or false in case you are giving anything that is not containing so start with also end with also you can use it similar way right true in case you want to check with java 1 but that is not containing right sometime right you need to search that particular thing is already matching or not so it will give you let you know that whether thing is available or not it's false because java 1 is not matching here but here if you change to java 1 now it will be working 
So that are the different kind of string methods available in Java. I think in the last session also, in case you want to check whether the string is empty or not, start with, end with, right, you can check. Okay, empty part, right, in case it's having some character, it will be giving you a, uh, not empty. So, uh, end with, you can also go with similar with contents, end with, start with, dot, is empty, you can check, is empty. Okay, let's create one more variable which is empty. Is four. How can you create it? So simply you need to give double code. That is called empty. Is four. Okay. So in it will give you. So definitely first one is not empty, so it will give you false. But the last thing is empty, it will give you true. Yeah. Question please. Similar way al along with just like contents you can go with start with and end with as well. Yeah, who is having the question? A are you not able to see my screen? Okay, okay. No, 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 no. No. Yeah, it is not, uh, your code will not be browser specific, guys. Okay. In case your code is working in the IE, okay, only you need to change that settings. Like Chrome driver, driver equal to like that. Web driver equal to new Chrome driver, web driver equal to Firefox driver, web driver, web driver equal to that is the only three lines you need to change it here. Okay. The variable and the path here. So this is the path you need to change here you need to use webdriver.chrome or Safari or uh, Gco like that and here it will be similar driver and this is the path name otherwise everything will be same it does not vary anything. So that is the reason right we will be using the uh, kind of uh, parallel or distributed testing. So parallel testing is nothing but same test case you can execute in different operating system and different browser as well without any uh, without this change so it will not vary it does not have any browser specific thing okay any questions i will take a pause before going to the other topics yeah yeah that is for different uh, different platform in different operating system yeah yeah, but for different browser, there no specific configuration. That is great for one, I mean distributed testing. That is called distributed testing. Because you want to distribute in different operating system, that is the where Selenium grid concept will be coming. Like no node and half this concept will come. One one places you will be containing your code, which is your node. And if from a single node, you can have n number of, sorry, hub. That is called your hub. And from the hub, you can have n number of nodes created and you can run them parallelly. That is the concept of distributed testing. So one no, one hub will con I mean, I mean control all your node. You can have 10 system and no, 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 that is different. <laughs> Here Selenium, uh, it is called hub and node concept. Hub means from where your source code will be triggered. Okay. And node means like uh, that source particular hub, it will be like access and will try to execute based on their own settings. Okay, and Git and GitHub is completely different. Okay, Git is your uh, kind of, I could say, GitHub is the repository management, right? Just like GitHub or maybe the GitLab, you can save your code, right? Or maybe the Jira or Dev Azure, you can save your code. And Git means the commands, right? The command through which you are interacting with that store, right? You are repository, right? I want to push the code, I want to pull the code, I want to merge the code all this stuff. I want to clone the code project, right? That is the way through git command, right? Git add, git commit, git clone, git push, pull, all this stuff. Okay. I'll go for the array then. So as of now, you already seen about what is character variable all about, what is string, right? Then what is array? 
so array is a collection of similar type of element that have contiguous memory location it will be similar type of element in case you are declaring something as an integer it will be having the integer only so an array is very common type of data structure where an all element must be of same data type once defined the size of the array is fixed and cannot increase to accommodate more element index start from the 0 to n minus 1 that is the one drawback of the array okay so array cannot handle this part once you define the size and in suppose in case you define the size as 5 right but you are having only three variable three value so the default to it will take the default value based on the data type like for the integer it will take zero later point of time in case having maybe seven so you cannot change it because once you fix the RSI it cannot be changed later point of time that to handle this drawback Java collection framework came into the market so you no need to give any dynamic uh, size it will take that uh, sorry you no need to give any static size it will take the dynamic size based on the variable you are encountering or interacting so user can store only the fixed size of the element in the array it does not grow its size at runtime to solve the problem java collection framework is used in java which grow automatically there are two type of array single dimensional and multi dimensional single dimensional means like only one dimensional multi dimensional means row and column wise right row and column so there is a two step process right one is directly you can define an array you can assign the value and other is right you, you can use three step process to declare array constructed and initialize the array okay so to declaring the array you need to just give that uh, in data type and then array name so i'll go one by one i will deal with two type of array one is like string and one is with the integer that's two thing i will cover here okay so let's uh, define something called uh, string array so three step i'll follow for the string and for the integer and multi dimension i'll follow only one uh, uh, approach so say let's comment out all this part So data type will be string here then the error name right say string array and you sing dimension you need to give that is called single dimension that is the first step I have did as part of my three step process okay declaring the array then the constructing the array means what is the size of the array right I want to define so this is the variable and you need to use the keyword called string and data type a new keyword data type and then within that one you need to give the size of so three. I want to give the size as 3 so it will only consider 0 1 and 2 right then you can that is the second step constructing the array and initializing the array so say I want to uh, initialize the array value so 0th index So say any name I can give say equal to sign say Rajesh then first index say Ramesh say Rahul so this is the three element that is the way I can give it okay now in case you want to access them you can simply use and simply call that one so that is the way you can deal with the array let a lot of depth thing you will be do we can do so array is a similar type of element you can hold in a single variable right with multiple value that is the concept of the array suppose say in case you are creating a class right say uh, student class okay but like uh, um, 10 student name you want to hold so single variable is possible so you need to create 10 variable but in array you can add all the 50 student name just by comma comma like that right that is the way so that is the way you can access them also as and when required so this is called single dimension only one dimension and any data type it can hold primarily like uh, for double float string integer byte all the data type it will be supported by the array you could see that is the way it is coming 
Now let's see, I want to add one more element. Okay. So during compile time, it will not throw any error. Compile time means whenever you saving code, that is called compilation. But whenever you want to access them, it will throw you the error. Because array size is 3, so it will only have can element 0, 1, 2. But it will throw you the error. That is the drawback of the array. So once size is fixed, you cannot have, right? You could see array out of index error. So that is the drawback you can access, have. Now say, in case I am not having defined any value for a particular element, but still I can access the element which will be taking the give out default value of the data type. Here default value of the data type is string, so for that one it will be give, sorry, null, for the string it will be giving you null. So once the size is fixed of the array, right, you cannot change it. In case you are not having more variable, it will take the default value. In case you are having more variable, you cannot handle it. So that is the way you can deal with the single uh, dimensional array and three step process you can follow it. Now I will define array which is other data type called integer and in a, in a same line of code with double uh, sorry uh, multiple array multidimensional array. So let us define multidimensional array or two dimensional array say integer. What is the dimension? This is called row and this is called column. So let me open some excel <coughs> so what is this suppose say I want to define 1 2 3 like that so this is called row and this is called column right 4 5 6 so what is the dimension of the array it is a 3 cos sorry 2 is the row number and 3 is the column number right so 2 cos 3 matrix or 2 cos 3 array ok so this is the row 2 so row will be 0 and 1 row right this is like 0 row this is first row similarly it will be 0 column this is first column this is second column so in case I want to access this variable say 5 so what will be that it is first row and first column in case I want to access this it will be 0th row and 2nd column. That is the way I need to give. Right? Rowth index will be 0th and column index will be 2. So, 0, 2 will be element 3. So, that is the way I can access multidimensional array. So, let us define uh, something I am giving say int r and I can define the value. So, whatever way I have defined, right? So, this is the second bracket you can give and in case you want to define row, you need to give like that 1, 2 and 3. And this is the first row then again comma for the other row say 4 5 and 6 same thing I have tried to implement here whatever I have written in the excel this is the same line I have tried to also define the array and add the value as well the same thing I have implemented here in the array so first 1 2 and 3 this is the row so that will be within that again double code that is first row and this is another row. So here my two row, zero and first row, and three column, one, two, and three. So zero column, first column, and second column. So that is the way I have defined. Now, in case I want to access any element, so I need to give right that array value, name, and also the row and column. So this is the one, and this is the other. So say I want to access I that four. So what is that first row? So I need to give here row. So first will be row, and second will be column. So what is the column here? The zeroth column. So I need to give the column index as zero. So it will be print me four. The output will be four. Okay. Similar way in case I want to access and I want to multiply two element. Okay. I want I can give star sign. I want to multiply 4 into 6 so it will be giving me 26 so I can take another thing so again row will be for that element also row will be 1 but column will be second right zeroth column first column and second column so it will be 4 uh, multiplied by 6 it will be 24 
So that is the way you can also do the operation based to hash and when required. So that is the way you can deal with the multidimensional array. So row and column. Row will start with this is the row, this is the row, and this is the column wise. This is called m cross n. Okay, and row value will go m a zero to m minus one. Column value will go zero to n minus one. Yeah, I will take a pause, guys. Yeah, anyone any questions? <coughs> Excel definitely apart from that in case you want to define multiple variables at the same time I already mentioned right you want to uh, define to a uh, 20 student name in the same variable is it possible but in case you are using the array it is possible single dimensional array you can use and you can have n number of variables and also excel value right similar way I whenever I'll be reading the value you will be using that concept of array <coughs> yeah yeah so we'll be using like a uh, list right list interfaces yeah list and or uh, yeah list set all the interfaces so all the interfaces from the collection framework will be using because array will not handle that dynamic change right that is the problem okay in case it's dynamic size is fixed I can use array but in case it is not fixed I need to use the Java collection framework for this drawback so that is the way slowly Java also advanced right advanced feature will be implemented to have the all the kind of drawback to handle all the kind of drawback okay so do the practice same way here you can go with that integer uh, single dimensional and uh, like string multidimensional that is the practice you can make in the vice versa <coughs> okay then the last couple of topics I'll cover from the Java loops which is very very important so as of now you already seen right lot of loop like for loop maybe you already seen right whenever you want, you want to reiterating right you could see I have used uh, for loop in the second session um, in the list interfaces for the multiple web element similar kind of stuff right uh, with the where I have gone yes you could see we have used for loop here and the list of web element right list interface web element the class interface also okay, that is the stuff we have used for loop to iterate right from 1 to n so 0 to n minus 1 in case your size is n okay so why it is required I already mentioned right so that in case you want to <coughs> go to a flat okay okay for uh, searching something right you cannot write write single line for every flat okay so instead of that you can iterate right you in case your flat size is 100 you can go to 0 to a 99 and you can search that person so that is the way you can try to find out okay loop so different kind of loop are available so for loop while loop, and do while loop and there are two uh, keyword available break and continue through which we can control the flow of the loop execution so apart from that right the uh, break keyword also can be used in the switch statement as well uh, next session I'll be covering the different kind of uh, right um, conditional statement like if if else uh, nested if else or if else if ladder and along with switch okay so in the switch statement also you can use continue keyword so there may be situation when user need to execute a block of code several number of times in general statement are executed sequentially the first statement in a function is executed first followed by the second and so on so loop statement are used for repetitive execution there are three loop for while and do while do so why for loop you will be using when you know the number of iteration is fixed you know the number of iteration you can go with the for loop so java for loop is a control flow statement that iterates a part of the program multiple times. For loop repeats a block of statement for a specified number of time. If the number of iteration is fixed, it's recommended to use a for loop. So what is the syntax for start value, end value, or increment or decrement, and then the statement. So that is the way we will try to define some loop.
so exactly follow the syntax for okay then the start value so i need to define the data type and the start value so i want to go with i i i equal to 0 then what is that next end point right so i want to check till i maybe less equal to 5 so it will be go till 5 0 to 5 in case you are giving less only it will go till 4 and then increment or decrement I want to increment because starting from 0 it is go to 1 to go to 5 so I will be using I plus plus so that is a simple syntax you need to use and then second bracket here you need to give the statement right I want to print the value of I okay now if you print out here you could see 0 1 2 3 5 is coming okay now if you go to the vice versa here so if you give i minus minus so what will be printing it will print nothing okay it is going in the different direction okay anything it is giving up error because it is starting from the zero and it is i minus minus but it will not match anything right any time so that is the reason it will create the problem okay maybe uh, then what i need to do i need to go with the higher value right i need to go with the higher value and then i need to ch if you give i less than 5 it, again it will not give anything it will be giving you blank i think yeah it is giving you blank why because uh, starting with i equal to 0 and i want to check it's less than 5 no it will not go so i need to give till get up then equal to 5 so that is the thing you need to change it in case you using decrement operator i minus minus you could see now it is starting with 10 then 9 8 7 6 5 in case you are giving only getter sign so it will go till 6 not the 5 so that is the way you can use for loop when your size is fixed you know then you can use the for loop the next is when you do not know the size right iteration size you can go with while or do while so what is the difference between while and do while so while means it will first check the condition and it will execute and do while means it will right do at least one time before checking the condition and then it will check the condition okay so in case your condition not matching in case you can use the while loop but in case you want to execute at least one time suppose in case you want to quit the driver always right whether your test condition is first pass or fail you can use do while so your browser will be closed after that your condition is matching or not matching that's fine it will not iterate it but you want to always close the driver so you can use do while loop but while in case you want to check only the hard coded part you can use it so while initialization so I will initiate something called initiate say j variable equal to 10 then while condition while what is my condition say j uh, uh, less than say 17 means it will go till 16 right then statesman j then increment or decrement here j plus plus similar ways uh, you can go with the decrement also so you need to give that starting with more value and it will give get equal to that is the way so yeah <coughs> you could see but in case your condition is not matching so it will not execute anything right it is starting from 10 i want to check whether it's greater than uh, less than 9 so it will not match it will not print anything okay so that is the way it will not work anything it will first check the condition while and then it will write execute your code so that is the for the while loop and do while loop little bit different it will do at least one times though your condition is matching or not right after that you will check the condition and then it will work accordingly so initialization then do do first initialization then do first so that is the syntax you don't need to remember anything syntax then statement that might statement then plus plus and outside that bracket you need to give the condition here 
so now you could see it will execute right 10 to 18 but in case condition is not matching say I am giving again maybe 8 so condition is not matching starting with J it will not match less than J there but still it will do one time after that for the next iteration as soon as it is plus plus then it will check the condition and it will not be executed so that is the difference between the while and do while loop you could see it executed one time though your condition is still not matching so that is the way three loops are popular as and when required you can use them then last two topics is the two keyword which is like um, continue and break keyword and how why we need to use them okay so I'm just giving a simple example so you are having a hundred flat okay and um, you want to search a person that I think already given last day also okay so you'll be going one by one as and when your condition is matching right you don't want to go to the other flat so uh, there's a hundred flat but your 20 flat number your condition is matching so you can break the loop okay so that is the way you can terminate the loop so that is the way you can use break statement okay and next continue suppose say you want to invite all your flat owner right maybe 20 flat is there but for a one particular member you are having some sort of problem okay you don't want to go with that one right you don't want to invite them you don't want to right uh, ring the bell to their flat owner so what you can do you can skip that flat and remaining flat you can go so you can use continue so as the condition is matching that part it will be immediately skipped and remaining execution will happen okay so that is the way you can use the continue and the break keyword so loop control statement change execution from its normal sequence when execution leaves a scope or automatic object that are created were created in the scope are destroyed java support break and continue control statement when a break statement is encountered inside a loop the loop is immediately terminated and the program control resume at the next statement following the loop java break keyword is used to break the loop or switch statement it break it breaks the current flow of the program at specified condition in case of inner loop it breaks only the inner loop so that is a break so I'll just trying to give you simple example here mm -hmm. so this is my loop okay this is my loop here and um, I want to break that loop for some condition here so how can I do that let's see okay so say I want to go till 10 so I can give okay less equal to fine starting with 0 you could see it is starting from 0 and it is coming from 10 but in case my condition is matching at the fourth place I want to terminate the loop so what you can do here within that bracket you can use something called if if and you can give some condition if I equal to equal to say 4 right immediately I want to terminate the loop I can break the loop then it will not print out anything so that condition it will first match so it will in case i equal to 0 1 2 3 it will go and as and when condition is matching it will break the loop so the remaining thing will not be executed so that is the thing you can do it so it will print 0 1 2 and 3 and as and when condition is matching with 4 immediately terminating the loop that way you can save the time also as and when condition is matching you don't want to go to the remaining iteration because you don't want to invest that time so it will help you to save that time and to give, uh, get the uh, which is no, result is not required at all no because that condition is matching immediately it is breaking the loop as and when condition is matching it will break the loop so 
no it will be maybe a compilation error na that is the syntax <laughs> mm. so because uh, you need to check the condition as a condition is matching you want to break the loop then you want to print because that print part is coming later right so that is the thing yeah <coughs> So similar way you can, uh, yeah, I mean, as and when required, you can give that condition. And continue means I already given you the example, right? In case I want to write, don't want to go a particular flat, but remaining flat I want to go, so I can instead of break, I can use continue. So what will be the output here? Okay, that i equal to equal to 4 will be ignored. i equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 will be there. And as and when it's matching with i equal to 4, that particular step will be ignored. And again, it will be resumed from the 5. Okay, that will be there. So you could see here, it is starting with 0, 1, 2, 3, that is the normal part. As and when condition is matching with i equal to equal 4, immediately that is get skipped. And remaining thing again is started from the normal execution. So that is the difference between the continue and the break. Break means it will be prematurely, right, stop your execution from that particular condition. And continue means, as and condition matching, that particular step will be skipped and again remaining thing will be as usual. Okay? Yeah, I'll be repeat all the stuff once, then we'll go for any questions. Okay, so Java is very much used. Even I must say that like na, more than 50 percent write uh, automation selenium project they uses Java and then like Python and C sub nowadays, sometimes Ruby and uh, PHP also they are using PAR also some project is using I will take the question guys no worry okay so there are a lot of features available that is the reason make Java more popular in the market okay uh, so JDK is the part right from where it is coming so JDK is nothing but a combination of JVM set of libraries there are development kit or development tool JDK stands for Java development kit the Java is case sensitive, right? Uh, Java program uh, will start from the main uh, method. Each statement will end with close semicolon, code blocks enclosed with double slash, so double bracket, right? Uh, the public static void main is the main method. SY is system dot out dot println is the method for printing something in the console. You can use single line or multiple line command to disable the code from the execution. Java supports primitive and non-primitive data type. Right, uh, the variable are uh, case sensitive. You cannot uh, use the reserve word in the variable. Variable value can be changed anytime. It will take the latest value. There are three type of variable: local, instance, and the class. Local is accessible on the within the uh, method or the block of command. Instance, right? First, you need to create object or instance. Then you can access it. And static or the class variable, you can access them right in the class directly. Because your single copy of the static variable will be shared among all the instance of the class there are a lot of operators also you can use arithmetic relational assignment logical operator object class is the blueprint of the object and object is the combination of similar kind of sorry class is a combination of similar kind of object right your uh, any kind of say uh, I mean fruit is the example of the class and right then uh, you can get go any number of fruit like banana mango guava right jackfruit these are the classes sorry object any class have n number of object okay so in case you want to create a object you need to use the new keyword here string is sequence of character written double code it can have alphabet number special character string also can be used with the new keyword there are a lot of methods available in the string you can use them you can use care at compared to equal ignore case right uh, then length replace uppercase lowercase stream contents start with end with substring as well array is a collection of similar type of element which is having the contiguous memory location one the size of the array is defined you cannot right add more variables or maybe in case you are having less variable it will also take the default value of the data type you can have single dimensional multi-dimensional array there are uh, loops in case you want to iterate the same thing again and again and again in number of time you can go with the loop okay and then there are uh, primarily um, uh, three type of loop in case your number of iteration is fixed you can go right you can go with that for loop in case number of iteration is dynamic you can go with the while and do while loop 
while loop you are conditionally first check and then it will iterate where whereas do while loop it will at least do one one time you are in case your condition is not matching then it will check for the condition you can control the this three kind of loop with the help of the break and continue keyword break means it will immediately terminate the loop as the condition is matching and continue means in case you are uh, having some condition that particular condition will be skipped with the help of the continue and then ag again it will be as usual right so that is the way right you can deal with the java basic part so next three session will be also from the java guys so that's all from today's session thank you